What I want to do here is derive some of the differential equations that are satisfied by Jacobi elliptic functions and then look at what they uh, mean intuitively. So just a quick reminder, uh, in the case for, so for our circular functions, sines and cosines, there is one differential equation that we definitely remember that they solve. Um, and that's that the second derivative of some function, maybe, maybe it's x, is equal to minus x. Uh, so, you know, sine or cosine, take two derivatives, you get minus that guy back. And uh, there's a second one which maybe you're not so familiar with. But maybe if, if you've taken mechanics, maybe you'll remember. Um, so so I'll, I'll actually use this dot notation here. So, uh, yeah, so, so dot notation. So yeah, I should define my notation. So, so dx dt is equal to x prime is equal to x dot. So I'll, I'll be using this notation right here. So x dot squared plus x squared equals a constant. This is another differential equation that sines and cosines solve. And if you've taken mechanics, then this will be familiar to you, because what's this saying? This is saying that uh, the energy of a harmonic oscillator, so the kinetic energy, which is like x dot squared, plus the potential energy, which is x squared, is equal to the total energy, a constant. And then if you take a derivative of this guy right here, uh, you get Newton's second law. You get x double dot, or acceleration, is equal to uh, minus x. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so this is what we get in the case of sines and cosines. Now let's look at what happens when we look at Jacobi elliptic functions. And I'll start off just by reminding us two important, uh, two important relationships for Jacobi elliptic functions. And these are our two, uh, our two familiar properties. Sn squared plus Cn squared equals 1 and Dn squared plus K squared Sn squared is equal to 1. Okay. So the first thing that we can do is, and the first thing that I'm going to do is just start taking derivatives. So if we take dSn du, we get Cn dn, which in terms of these guys right here, we can express as uh, square root 1 minus Sn squared, 1 minus k squared Sn squared. Which then if we square both sides, um, and maybe we, we replace this Sn with y, um, which is perfectly fine, right? It's just the name. Then we have dy. No, I'll just call it y prime. We have uh, or y y dot. So so I guess I guess this is a derivative with respect to you. Y dot squared is equal to one minus y squared times one minus k squared y squared. Okay, and we can expand this out to get a little bit more intuition. And what we get is that y dot squared plus 1 plus k y squared minus k squared y to the fourth is equal to 1. Um, so this is sort of like this energy uh, equation right here that we have for the harmonic oscillator, except that we have this quartic term. We have, you know, y dot squared plus something y squared, that's harmonic oscillator. But then we have this minus y to the fourth term. Uh, which is nonlinear and which generalizes from our harmonic oscillator. Then, and, and also I'll say, you know, we can we can take a derivative of this just like we do up here to get Newton's second law. And then our Newton's second law in this case is y double dot equals minus 1 plus k squared y, so our harmonic term, plus 2k squared y cubed. And so... I just want to say something a little bit about the intuition behind this. So if we look at our energy terms here, our potential energy, which is what you would call it in mechanics, uh, we have some positive thing on y squared and some negative thing on y to the fourth. And so what this is telling us is that Sn satisfies a differential equation which corresponds to a mechanics problem where you have a potential that sort of looks like this. So for, for large values of, of u in this case, or whatever your, your variable or your, like your position variable is, the potential drops off. Um, but in the center right here, you have a positive y squared. And so you have, you have this little bowl right here. And so what that tells us is that Sn corresponds to the oscillations in this bowl right here. And so that's already pretty interesting because this is a problem that 
you know, if I if I gave you this problem in a mechanics class, you wouldn't have known how to solve it because this is this is nonlinear. We only know how to do the harmonic oscillator. But now that we have these Jacobi elliptic functions, these are built just so that way we can solve this problem right here um, for SN. So so that's great. That's really useful. We can repeat this type of process right here. Um, so so how did I derive this differential equation? Well, I started you know I took a derivative and then I used some trig properties and and, and I got it that way. Uh, you can do the same thing for cn when we repeat it for cn what we find is that y dot squared for for cn is equal to well it has something like this it's one minus y squared one minus k squared plus k squared y squared and if we expand this out then we have something that is y y dot squared plus one minus two k squared y squared plus k squared y squared uh, k squared y to the fourth equals one minus k squared. Okay, um, and then of course, yeah, we can we can take another derivative of this to get our, our Newton's second law type equation, and we get y double dot equal to minus one uh, minus two k squared minus one minus two. A squared y minus 2k squared y cubed okay um, so let, let's look a little bit about the at, at this potential right here and see if we can get uh, any intuition out of it uh, so what do we see we see that this potential energy term right here well, what does it correspond to it corresponds to well we have a positive quartic so we know that it's going to go up at plus and minus infinity but then we have this um, this quadratic term right here, and this quadratic term goes between, well, k goes between 0 and 1. So that means that at 0, this is plus y squared. At 1, this is minus 2y squared. So this is actually, this y squared term right here can be positive or negative. And because of that, this, uh, this, this, this uh, potential right here corresponds to two different things. Um, on the one hand, you can have just an ordinary quartic oscillator. So it looks quadratic, but then actually grows a bit faster. But you can have another case, which is even more interesting. And in that, that's the case where you have a negative y squared and a positive y to the fourth. Because in that case, you get something that looks like this. You get a double well potential. And the double well potential is, is a super important, uh, super important potential in, in classical and, and especially quantum physics. Um, so it's super cool that... The, our CN function is exactly the function that we, we need in order to solve this, uh, this problem right here, in order to get the solution to this potential. Um, okay, so that, that's super cool. Last one we have is DN. So, so DN, you know, the story's the same. We can do the same thing that we did in these two cases, and I'll, and I'll write it up here for space. So if, if we do this again for dn, what we get is uh, y dot squared is equal to y squared minus 1, 1 minus k squared minus y squared. Expand it out, and you get y dot squared plus k squared minus 2 y squared plus y to the fourth equals k squared minus 1. Okay, um, and then, yeah, Newton's second law. Take a derivative of this guy, and what we get is that y double dot is equal to 2 minus k squared y minus 2y cubed. Okay, um, so these are our equations for dn, um, but let's look at what this potential looks like now. So this potential here, we have the positive y to the fourth, so positive quartic. But this y squared is always going to be negative. So this is going to on, always be restricted to the case of this double well potential. But then, okay, well, what's the difference then between dn and cn? For cn, we had this double well potential. And then for dn, we have another double well potential. So what's the difference between the two? How, 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 how is this different from that? Well, there's one key difference. Uh, for cn, we know that cn goes between minus one and positive one. So what that effectively means here is that the oscillations that you're seeing are going like this. It's starting you know, on the right-hand side, then it's going over this ridge to the left-hand side, back over this ridge to the right-hand side, and so on and so forth. 
With dn, with dn we're looking at something different. dn doesn't go between minus 1 and 1. dn goes between 1 and 1 over a, or, or really just between two positive values, or two negative values, if you, if you multiply the whole thing by a minus sign. And so while cn corresponds to oscillations that go between uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, dn corresponds to oscillations that are just in one of these two uh, dips in the potential. So in, in the case for dn, uh, you don't have enough energy to get over this hump right here. You're, you're stuck on one side or the other oscillating. And that's, that's, a, that's a crucial difference between these two. Because depending on your initial conditions, what that tells you is that either, either you'll be oscillating, you know, you have enough energy, you can make it over the hump so you're, you're able to uh, visit both sides of the potential. Or if you don't have enough energy, you'll be a DN. You'll be stuck on one side oscillating there. And so those are the key differences between... Uh, or the key interpretations of uh, SN, CN, and DN just from their differential equations. And so you, ha you see that it's, it's interesting, like it's super interesting, and, and, and there's a very nice uh, mechanics interpretation for SN, CN, and DN in terms of these quartic type oscillator problems. Uh, but I think I'll stop there. The, the last thing I'll just mention is that um, if you take K equal to zero, which you should always do to make sure that you know you get back your your circular uh, function differential equations. If you do that here, then you get uh, exactly what you would expect in each case. You, can, you get you get the an equation for these two for sine and cosine, and then here, if you take uh, k equals zero, you get uh, yeah, you, you get something which is satisfied by one. You know that, that that's easy to do. Um, so. I'll stop there. In the next video, I'll start looking at um, how you can actually apply these types of differential equations to mechanics problems and get meaningful solutions. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you in the next video.